Hi, this is Joe Yannetti. I'm one of the co-writers of the movie Suckers, and I'm going to show you how not to get suckered on your next car purchase. Assuming that you've chosen which particular car you want to buy, do your research. Find out, number one, there's different prices. There's the invoice price. The invoice is what the dealer pays for the car. Then there's what most people will just call the sticker price, which is also called the MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price. What you want to do is get as close to the invoice price and as far away going downward from the Manufacturer's Suggested Retail as you can. Now, you can find out what the invoice price is at the dealership, they have to tell you. You can go to the DMV and find out. You can go online and find out. You want to know what the options that you would like will cost so that when you go to the dealer they can't tell you that they cost any more than what they're supposed to be charging you for them. Go to your bank. Find out what finance charges are. You should do more work before you go to the dealer than you will actually do at the dealer. Go to a bank or a credit union. Say you want a, a particular uh, payment per month. You can go to a credit union and say I have X amount of dollars to put down. I want my payment to be this much and they'll tell you how much money you would have to borrow and find out what the percentage rates are and find out what that means because if you go to your bank and you say I'm going to borrow $18,000 I'm going to put down $4,000 and they tell you for the amount of time you want to pay for it for your payments are going to be three fifty, and you go to a dealership and at the same exact numbers they tell you your payments are four seventy five. then you know something's wrong that they're not charging you what the bank was going to charge you you don't want to walk into a dealership and take a chance that you're just going to get whichever car salesman is next up for you and go through all the things. Because all you want to do now is you want to go to the dealership and you want to drive a few cars. Call ahead. Ask for a sales manager. Explain to him what you want to do. You want to go down. You want to test drive the cars. You just want to check out the car to see if you like it and that's it. So what that does is they're expecting you, you go at a time that the dealership's not that busy where the car salesman can spend more time with you. He's already got it into his head that the chances of you buying the car right now aren't that great. So he'll take some time with you and they'll probably give you to a salesman that is a more patient type of a guy. From every aspect of this, from when you're calling the car dealership to when you're test driving the car to when you're negotiating the prices. You should never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to and find out if these guys are lying to you. See, it always baffled me that everyone seems to think that all car salesmen are liars. Yet, they'll go to a car dealership not knowing anything, expecting to get honest answers from someone that they're already convinced is a liar. Next, your test drive. If you drive a car to work every day, 40 miles on a highway, freeway, you don't want to take a test drive that goes one block around the dealership. Drive the car the way you would drive the car. Give it a real workout. Don't let the guy bully you. Everything is control. You, this is the second largest purchase you make in your life, aside from your home. Don't rush into it. If you want to drive the car on the highway, if the highway is 20 miles away from the dealership, tell him, I would like to drive the car on the highway. If he doesn't want to do that, find another dealership that's closer to the highway. Find another salesman that will allow you to do that. Go back to the dealership and tell the sales manager, I want to drive this car on the highway. This is the most important thing once you're at the dealership. Who has the control? These guys sell cars every day of their life. And the whole thing is control. And from the second you walk on to that dealership's property, every single thing they do is leading you into buying a car. What I used to say to customers as soon as they walked onto the lot, who's the lucky person going to drive home in a car today? Right away, they're setting the parameters that today is the day you have to buy this car. So you want to avoid this as much as possible and let them know that you're the one who's in control and you don't have to be mean you just don't have to do every single thing that they say and a lot of these guys will be really courteous and they're gaining information from you don't allow them 
to bully you into not doing something that you want to do. Take all the time you need. Patience. Have patience. Because it's, this, it's their job to rush you. Not to give you time to think. Anytime you feel a little uncomfortable in your gut, acknowledge that. Take a break. Tell the guy, I need to go to the bathroom. Go in the bathroom. Take a break. Just stop talking to him. Take a breather. Take a deep breath. Go outside. Smoke a cigarette if you smoke. Anytime you feel like you're getting pressured, just step back and think about it and you'll start to realize what's going on. Once you're done with the test drive, the first thing he's going to want to do is take you inside and negotiate. If you don't love the car, don't negotiate. You shouldn't buy a car based on a price if you don't like the car. Go look around. Look at the other cars in the same class or the same price range. If you're ready to buy the car, then go inside. But in my opinion, you should never test drive and then go right inside and negotiate a deal. Test drive the car, go home, give it a couple of days. One of the biggest tricks that they'll use is they'll make you feel like there's some type of an urgency and every single day of the month, every month of the year, every week, a car dealership will come up with some reason why today is the best day of the year to buy this car. You're never going to get a better deal than you're going to get today. It's just a lie. It's not true. This is the most important thing to remember. The customer has all the control. You're in control. He's going to try as hard as he can to take control. There is no time during the negotiation that you can't simply get up and walk out. And you don't necessarily even have to leave. If it's a car that you really want and you think you can get the right deal and you don't want to go anywhere else, just get up and say, hey, this is getting a little too intense for me right now. I'm going to go take a walk around the block and then I'm going to come back and take the paperwork with you. And they're going to try and make you feel guilty. They're going to try and make you feel like you're taking up their time. They'll try and make you feel like they could have sold three cars in the time that you were there. And that's a bunch of crap. Take their time. Take your time. And do what you want to do. And get what you want to get. Here's a neat thing. Bring a calculator to the dealership with you. Because to a car salesman, a calculator is the same thing that a crucifix is to a vampire. Anytime they show you numbers, if you walk into a car dealership and this guy doesn't use a computer to calculate what the numbers will be, he's lying. If he writes down numbers and says, we'll give you this much for your trade, we'll give you this much for your payments, we'll give you this much down payment, he can't, there's no way uh, any human being can calculate these things in their head. Anytime they write down numbers, add your down payment, what you're getting for your trade, Multiply all of the payments. If you're leasing, add the residual. Add everything up. And then it's going to create a number that is so big. See, what he wants to do is he wants to show you numbers that he perceives to be small. What you want to do is keep adding them up to make them be really big. Because if you're buying a car, say, for $17,000, and once you add in all the stuff with the interest and finance rates, and if you're buying warranties and all kinds of stuff like that, once you add everything up, it's going to be a huge number. And you can use that and, and make him lower his numbers. There's four basic areas of a car deal. Number one is your trade. Anytime. Now, you should have done your research. You should have found out what your car was worth. Find, you could go to the library, get a Kelly Blue Book, and learn how to read it and add up all the numbers to find out what your car is really worth. First of all, in my opinion, you should never trade a car in. You should try to sell the car on your own. You're not going to get anywhere close to as much money on a trade-in because it... It's just logic. They have to take it in at a wholesale price because they have to sell it at a retail price. But if, they, if you allow them to give you $2 for your car, they'll take your car for 2 bucks. Then you got the purchase price, what you're actually paying for the car. What they're going to put up here is they're going to put up the MSRP, like I told you before. They're going to put that up there and they're going to tell you that they're going to give you a discount. They're going to tell you that you have to put at least a third down. Well, you don't. If you have great credit, you can put no money down. And the only reason why they'll say, they'll, people will 
point to this and go, it says here you have to put a third down. The paperwork that they use, just like this paperwork here, this is all paperwork that's made up by the dealership. This is nothing. They go into a computer, they make it up themselves. It has nothing to do with the bank. So they're going to tell you to put a certain amount down and you can determine whatever you want that number to be. Don't make them tell you what that number has to be. And then your payments. Now, I told you before, anytime they tell you what these numbers are, add them all up. Add them all up. If you did your research, you're going to be at your bank and you're going to be able to know what the numbers should be. The one most important thing when you're negotiating the purchase is the total selling price of the car. What they're going to try to do is get you to only concentrate on the payment. They're going to go from your trade to the selling price to the down payment and they're finally going to end up at your payment. And they're going to say, look, they'll say things like, what if this car costs $500,000 and I can sell it to you for 20 bucks a month. You'd buy it right now, right? Well, it's a ridiculous idea, but they'll use it and somehow it works logically in your mind and you'll say yes to that and they got you. Now you're only talking about the payment and it's the easiest way to get ripped off. Don't concentrate on anything except the total selling price of the car. How much are you going to sell this car to me for? Well, we'll have to see what we can get you financed and what we can do this and what kind of rate. You don't want to let them say anything. You control it. This is the number I want to negotiate right here. What's the invoice price? How much did you pay for the car? I'll allow you to make a little money, but I want to know exactly what this number is. Then you work from there. Now, there's all kinds of tricks to get you off of the total selling price of the car. First, they're going to go to your trade. Tell them, I don't have a trade. My brother-in-law is buying my car from me. Then they're going to try to get you on the down payment. And you say, I don't know what my down payment's going to be. It all depends on what the total selling price of the car is. And my mother might be lending me some money. And my sister owes me some money that she might come up with. Just Or very simply say, why won't you tell me what the total selling price is? Anytime they try to get you off of this, say, explain to me. Pretend you're naive. You don't know anything. Look, I'm really sorry, but I just don't understand why we can't just talk about the total selling price of the car. And they have a million answers. And don't get distracted. Concentrate. Focus. Listen. If he's taking you away, you'll feel it. Listen to your gut. If he's taking you away and you can't figure out how to get back, Walk away, walk out, take your time, take a breath. This is one of the biggest tricks, one of the best tools a car salesman has, the credit application. This application has every bit of information of your whole life that they need to use against you. And that's what they're going to do. A lot of stuff that you don't even realize they're doing. They're going to get your name, your phone number, your address. They're going to get that first. And they're going to tell you, well, we can't negotiate until we can see that you qualify to buy this car. And say, look, I qualify to buy the car. I can get a loan at my own bank. I don't want to do a credit application. I want to know what I'm going to pay for this car. Stick to your guns. First thing they're going to get, your name and address and phone number. The reason why they do that is because if you walk out, they're going to call you when you go home. They'll find you. They're not going to give up. So you don't want to be harassed if you decide you don't want to buy a car from this person. So don't give them this information right away. Then they're going to get your previous address, your occupation. Now they're gaining information. They're calculating all this stuff. I'm an engineer and I've been working at this company for 12 years. They know that you're stable and they can get you financed. They're going to get a low rate of financing. They're going to jack it up and charge you more for it. And this is all information that they're gaining to use against you. When they ask you about your nearest relative not living with you, if you're a person that doesn't have good credit or doesn't have enough money to put down on the car, they're going to go, well, what about your sister here? It says 
that um, she works at this place, whatever information they get about your sister. Why can't you borrow money from her? Down below here, they're going to get they're going to get your information of where you live. Do you rent? Do you own? If you own a house, they know that, that you probably have decent credit. Uh, they're going to get all your credit card numbers. When you say, hey, I can't put down $5,000. All I can put down is three. They're going to go, well, I see here you have a MasterCard. What's your credit limit? We have your credit limit. We have your balance. You can put $500 on this credit card. You can put another 1000 on that one. That when they have the insurance information, they use the insurance information to know that you can buy the car right now and you can drive away with it without having to buy insurance because you're already insured. And another thing is, when they check your credit, if you get, go to six different dealerships and all six of them check your credit, that looks bad for you. Just a quick summary, most important thing, do your research. Find out everything that you need. Get prices for everything that you want. Find out what car and what you're buying and how good it is. Find out if it's a reputable dealership. Go to a friend and find someone who treated them nicely. Control yourself. Don't let them control you. Anytime you get a bad feeling, understand that you have a bad feeling for a reason and step back. Get everything in writing. Don't take anything on their word. Don't take their word for anything. Get everything in writing and signed. And don't take the car until it's your car. And it has everything on it that they promised you. I'm Joe Yannetti. I hope you enjoyed the DVD. Hope you enjoyed watching the movie. And I hope I save you a whole bunch of money on your next car purchase.